Hello, and welcome to Spoonie Style. I'm Melanie, your Spoonie Style Guide. And today, we're going to talk about one of girls' favorite topics, shoes, and how shoes has impacted my Spoonie Style. And hopefully, you can relate. I think most girly girls love shoes and collecting shoes like the famous stereotype and we take pride in our shoes. In fact, I have three daughters. Uh, one's about to be 18. Uh, I have a 16 year old and a 12 year old and she's about to be 13 and they discuss who's going to get my shoes. It's not morbid at all. I can't wear 90% of my shoes anymore, but I can't seem to get rid of them because I keep telling myself that one day I'm going to get well and I'll be able to wear them again. I used to work in a bridal salon when I was putting myself through graduate school and we would carry two bridal gowns with, tr with trains uh, on each arm and we'd have to hold them over our heads like this, two on each arm, in high heels for eight to 12 hours. And I used to do it. And then I got my graduate degree uh, and I worked as a teacher and I would walk around all day long uh, in high heels with no problem. And then my illness progressed to the point to where I couldn't do that any longer. And it really made me sad because I enjoy dressing up all cute and wearing those heels. And um, if you're a high heel wearer, it really is a part of your personality. People identify you with that and you identify yourself with that. So I thought that I would kind of show you my progression of my illness and going through my shoe story kind of gives you an idea, uh, my shoe analogy, it, it kind of clicked from my husband, he sent me. So this is one of my favorite pair of boots. And I would wear these out and about. High, right? It's one of my favorite pairs, I wear them all the time. This is one of my favorite pair of shoes. I would wear these to work and walk around in my cute little cream suits. This pair of shoes looks awesome with a brown suit or even a black suit. I can't wear them anymore. Um, when I was having, I'd say moderate aches and pains, I wasn't healthy um, at that time. I used to complain about my aches and pains uh, that was after I moved from the cold weather to the warm weather because I knew I wasn't feeling well, um, but I was still able to cope. Generally, what I did was I would wear my flip-flops in to work, and then when I got to work, I'd slip my heels on. I'd wear my heels during the workday, and then I would take them off maybe during lunch, and then put them back on. Uh, as I was working and then I would take them off at the end of the day and I was fine or I'd go to a party and I could wear my heels for the whole party and I was fine then I got to the point to where I couldn't wear my heels anymore and I wore more um, casual sandals because my job required that I wore some kind of dressy nice shoes I would wear casual sandals and I'd wear dressy flats. And by the time my illness progressed to where I had to wear the casual sandals and the dressy flats, I do have to say that my feet would swell and I was in pain, but I had to wear them. So I would wear something more like this, but by the end of the day, I was in extreme pain and my feet hurt. But bosses don't care. You have to wear them anyway. So that was a very difficult period for me. Um, and it makes me really sad even to think about it. 
um, and think about how unyielding my bosses were. Um, I would also wear something like this because the job where I was required um, that you had a shoe that had a back on it because that's what they considered professional was that the front of your foot was covered and the back of your foot was covered. Um, and when bosses are unyielding like that, they don't consider that a person's foot swells throughout the day. And actually what happens is that your foot begins to overlap that part. So even if I'm wearing something more like a loafer, like this type of shoe, my foot would start to swell up across the top and it would become very uncomfortable. So only on Fridays would I be allowed to wear something like a sneaker to work. So I would wear a sneaker and that might be more comfortable, most people would think, because it would be more supportive on my foot. But a lot of people with chronic illness will tell you that even this part of the sneaker actually starts to hurt um, because you don't have a lot of give there and even a sneaker becomes very uncomfortable. Um, so I actually don't even wear sneakers anymore. They're very uncomfortable for me. So I don't wear this type of shoe. And I bought these. I love these shoes. I don't really wear these anymore because any type of shoe with lace, whether it's this shoe or this shoe, the laces are hard for me because um, I've mentioned before, uh, they call what I have bilateral carpal tunnel. I have trouble controlling my fingers. I have a pain that runs from my head down my shoulders through my fingers. And so something like tying shoes or something like that is really difficult for me. Um, tying shoes is, is very painful. Um, it seems kind of crazy to say that about somebody of my age, but if you could imagine like your grandparent trying to tie their shoe, that's why only people wear Velcro shoes. I went to more of a slip-on type of shoe so that I would not have to tie my shoes. Um, and I would try to get away from the loafer type shoe. I tried this type of shoe out, but it doesn't really have a lot of support along the side. So even though it has no give because it's more of a bendy, cheaper shoe, it also doesn't have any support. So it's really not comfortable. I wear flip-flops a lot. And so I bought these thinking, oh, well, this is something that's going to be out of the ordinary. Um, dress up the regular flip-flop look a little bit. I'll get a wedge flip-flop. This was a big mistake. Just this little bit of wedge is really hard on my ankle um, and my calf. And when I have that inflammation in my ankle and my leg, it's very painful to have this little wedge on my foot, so this was also a mistaken purchase. So I spend a lot of time in just a regular flat flip-flop. I'm sure there's a podiatrist out there somewhere who is shaking their heads and telling me how bad these flip-flops are for my feet. However, I get the least amount of pain in flip-flops, so I wear them a lot. Perhaps long-term they're causing some other problem um, but they give me the ro most relief for my feet. So one of my favorite shoes has kind of become one of my um, signature shoes. It's really impractical because I live in a very warm climate, but I have two pairs of these types of shoes. Um, I did buy the premium brand. These are a very expensive brand shoe. Um, I bought them used. Both pairs um, are mine, and um, I simply love them. They're awesome. Just a hint, what I did was I bought, you can actually buy the insoles for them new. So I bought brand new insoles because I thought it was icky to put my feet, a lot of people, I wear mine barefoot, and I know that previous owner probably wore them barefoot. So what I did was I bought new insoles, and I stuck new insoles down in there so that I was the first person to put my bare feet on the insoles of the shoe. 
um, and then you can buy the kits also from the uh, manufacturer to clean my, not this hair, but um, my suede hair to clean them. These are my best friend. Um, I always made fun of people who wore these in warm climates. I'm now one of those people because my feet love these shoes. So I wear these a lot. Also, these particular types of shoes, um, they're very similar to the other ones that I showed you. They're both inexpensive, but this one um, has some kind of nylon junk here, and it's made out of some kind of pleather nonsense, whereas this one is totally a very soft, you can see how it collapses, fabric. Um, this is one of my go-to shoes also. I love this shoe. Um, I wear it a lot. Um, I bought two pair when I bought this shoe. Um, it gets a lot of use. My feet love this shoe. Um, and so I spend a lot of time in this shoe. It's one of my best purchases. So, um, you really have to find what's going to work out for you best in your situation and what makes you comfortable because we all know that we get so little in. It's kind of a bummer that I can't wear my beautiful little shoes that I used to wear, but you know, life goes on and there's people with bigger problems and I have bigger problems and, um, I just try to be as fashionable as I can with uh, what works for me. So I have my flip-flops in a lot of different colors and I try and invest in cute brand flip-flops. And um, also I have those fabric shoes and I try and get those in all the cute colors I can find. And I do the same thing with my boots and make the best of what works for me. And I hope that you find something that works for you. And like I said, with everything else, all the other choices that we make, don't let people talk down on any choice that you make about what works for you. But also be open for suggestions and try new things. And hopefully you find something that works and enriches your life a little bit. Now go and find your skinny style. Here on YouTube, feel free to leave messages and comments about the different posts that I put on here. However, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to weed through all of the comments that you leave here. So I recommend that you email me on my Gmail account. There is a Facebook page that you can go to and you can like and I have daily questions there and then also you can use that opportunity to post the answers to those questions and read what other people say and maybe meet some new friends.